thank you everyone. And um, tonight we're here to talk about knowledge sharing and uh, more precisely how sharing your knowledge lets you become a better developer. In fact, I'm thinking about that for years and to better understand that, I'd like to go back in time. I'd like to go back six years ago because at that time, I didn't know anything about coding. I did a business school, and before that, I studied humanities, so very, very, very far away from computer science. But I found it very useful, and I wanted to give it a try. So I met people, and um, those people told me if you really want to be a real developer, you need to code all the time. So that's what I did. I first um, read all the tutorials I could find, and uh, I joined a boot camp. And after a boot camp, I started a startup, and I code, I code, I code, I code. And last year, I was offered a great opportunity at Open Classrooms, the leading e-learning platform in Europe. They proposed me to do an um, e-learning path about Python. And I had to design everything, um, projects, skills, courses, do videos, assessments, and also do some mentorship. At the end, I realized that everything was clearer. And it was quite um, strange for me because I thought that I could only get better coding all the time, but for one year, I coded less and I wrote more. I spent hours and hours re rehearsing, writing down um, words in French, explaining concepts, and less coding. Why did I knew more at the end than I knew at the beginning? The first thing I realized was that creating a course made me active in my training. Because when you do a course, when you create content, you have no choice. You are not watching a video or following a tutorial, um, reading a book. You are choosing your own words. You are choosing your own examples. So you are active. It's the same thing than when you see someone running and when you run for yourself. You remember because you have been running, but maybe you will not remember this person who was running. It's the same thing. The only thing was that, I told you, I rehearsed. Um, each, for each of my course, I repeated maybe six or seven times its content. Because you have to think what you will um, explain in this course. Uh, you have to write down the content, then you have to proofread it by someone that is better than you, implement the reviews, then do the videos, do the screencasts, do it again and again and again, and each time a student asks you a question, you go back to your course and you improve it. So let me tell you that at the end, you know your course better than anyone. And each concept that you wrote down, you really know it as if it was part of yourself. To take another metaphor, it's like when you were very young and your teacher asked you to learn something. Maybe at the beginning you didn't know what it was about, but you had to do it. So you learned. And years after, you remember it because it's so in your brain that it's part of you. And that's because you rehearsed a lot. And as I'm saying that, I remember something that um, 
I learned years ago. It's a sentence from Nicolas Boileau. Ce qui se conçoit bien s'énonce clairement et les mots pour le dire viennent aisément. I'm sure that many of you don't understand, that's why I translated it. Whatever is well conceived is clearly said and the words to say it flow with ease. I learned that sentence when I was uh, um, maybe 16 years old. And now that I am a developer, it's always in my mind. And when I first created courses, I realized that things that seemed clear, in fact, were not. Because I wasn't able to put words on my code. I thought I knew what I was doing, but I couldn't explain why I was doing it. I couldn't explain the design patterns. I couldn't explain the theory around it. And that's why creating those courses made me better. And I think that's why at the end, everything was clearer because I had to put words. I had to explain it. I see knowledge as a um, raw diamond. When you first um, learn to do something, you have the feeling that it's shiny and brilliant and you know everything. But the more you discover about it, the more you see that you don't know anything. And each time you learn something, you create a new shape on that diamond. And that's what is great about courses, is that you push yourself to another level, and each time you create content, each time you have questions, you create a new shape on that diamond, and you get better. Sometimes, also, you have questions you don't understand. Um, some students ask me, in this HTML page, why do we have a head and why do we have a body? Why don't we just put everything at the same time? We don't need that. You have to explain, you have to find something. And it's okay if you don't know, you just search. And searching, you improve yourself. I had another question about um, Postgres servers. And someone asked me, why do you launch a server when you use Postgres and you don't run a server when you use S um, SQLite? I didn't know what, how to answer that. Uh, I had to change my mind. I had to change the way I saw databases to be able to answer. So, creating courses, meeting students, answering questions, will also um, push you to another level, I, saw, I said it, but also um, force you to find the answers. When you create a course, it, it's not just about writing down some notes and let the other find its answer. It's about giving the best content possible. I'm sure that if you do something, you will find the best uh, answer. Um, for example, um, I'm sure that you will read another book, you will watch videos, you will see everything, everybody that talked about this subject to be sure that you didn't say the same thing and to be sure that you are not saying bad things. And by doing so, you are improving yourself and you are training yourself. And you're also stepping out of your comfort zone. I know it's um, not a very good feeling not to know, but going out of your comfort zone will be such a good feeling after because you will get better and you will be proud of yourself. So I'm sure now every one of you wants to create a course. Yeah! And you're asking how? How? Let me give you some advice. Um, give concrete examples and abstract definitions. 
Some people learn by examples. Um, they need to know how to do it. Um, and other people learn by theory. They need to have definitions. They need to have words and um, concepts. If you put both of them in your course or in your content, you're sure that you will target all those people. When you write the title of your course and the description, make sure that you have a project to explain what you will, um, what will you, what your course will be about, and also that you will explain how you will do the project. Why? Because some people will be interested in the finality, the project in itself. For example, how to make a web application, how to make an e-commerce website. But other people will be more interested in the how. What language, um, what concepts. Anyway, they need to see it in the description of your course. At the beginning of each chapter, make sure that you give the big picture of your chapter. What concept will you explain? What will you do during this chapter? And then go further and explain in details. You can't give enough details in each chapter and there is no silly question. So each time you have the feeling that you can go further, that maybe something is not very clear, put a note, put a link to another documentation so that people that want to go further can do so. Another thing I learned is that um, we have different ways of memorizing things. Some people will learn by watching things, I mean reading, writing, other people will learn hearing or talking about something. And other people will learn sense, um, uh, feeling things. These are three categories of people you can target in your courses, even if it's written. You can take examples that will um, use those three senses. And talking about examples, Please take an example that is fun, that will make you smile, and also that is different from what we can find on the web. Please don't take an example that is too geeky. Um, don't explain object uh, OOP with another... Um, um, ah, I don't find the word. Um, with words and, and characters and, and uh, video games. <laughs> yes, you like video games, I like video games, but maybe the learner will not. And we can find examples from every day, from our ordinary life, from the supermarket or uh, maybe our neighbor. Very simple example, because when your learner will read your course, he or she should not focus on the example, but more on what the example will teach him. So the example should not stop this person. Detail each step, even the tiniest, and be fun. Because you will read your course six, seven, ten times. You don't know, but you don't want to get bored when you will read it again. Think of your and make something funny. And if you don't want to create a course, you can share your knowledge in other ways. If you're more a face-to-face -face person, you can join coding workshops or do some mentorship. You can go to coding dojos. Yes, you can write documentation. I know people, I know you think that maybe it's boring, but it's not if you make it in a funny way, if you turn this into a nice experience, put some jokes, um, think about what you want to remember in six months, one year. Writing documentation can be fun, and it's so useful in a team. 
So you don't have to answer those questions 10 times. You can also organize theme lunch. Theme lunch is uh, talking to your colleagues about something you discovered during lunch. It's very simple, it's easy to organize, anyone can do it, and for one hour, for an hour, for one hour, you will be with your colleague and you will have a great moment and you will share your knowledge. You can also do talks, like me, now. And if you're more an online person, you can do mentorship also. You can write a blog, you can create a course, you can write an e-book or a paperback book. Whoa. You can also go to an online coding dojo. Well, possibilities are endless. So now I'm sure you want to do it, but, but maybe you have the feeling you don't have nothing to say. I'm sure you have something to say because you spent the whole day here, so you learned something, so you have something to share. And anyway, you obviously, obviously learned something, so go ahead. Maybe you have the feeling you're not an expert. Well, all experts had to start somewhere, and they didn't were born experts, so you're not yet. Maybe you can find someone that will proofread you, someone that you think is better than you and can give you good reviews. And even if you think that you are an expert, you should ask to someone, you should ask someone to read your course for you because even experts can do errors. We are humans, we are not robots, and even robots make errors. Maybe you're afraid of criticism. It's normal. When I published my first course, um, I had a horrible review. Someone posted on a forum um, a review, a two pages long review, saying, this is horrible, it's a nightmare, how can they publish that beep thing? It's <laughs> At first I thought, Wow, this is horrible, I give, up, I give up everything, I go in the countryside and raise goats and that's the end. <laughs> then uh, I slept and the day after I thought, okay, hmm, well, maybe, maybe I read it again and uh, yes, they were things that were right. So I answered uh, that person saying thank you. Uh, maybe it wasn't the right way to say it, <laughs> but some things were right and these things were not. So it will get better with experience and you will learn how to handle bad reviews. Or maybe you have the feeling you don't have enough time. I'm sure you can spend less time on, those, on, on certain things and more time on improving your career. And the last thing is, maybe you don't know how to do. Well, we talked about it. And anyway, find something that you like, that you really love and you really want to share. And the way of sharing it will flow easily. And to finish, um, that's the, the last thing I thought about um, creating course is that creating course levels up the whole community because you are creating content for others. And by doing so, it will be easier to hire. It will be easier to speak to someone in the community. And I realized also that I gave back to the community what it gave me. Because I learned so much, so, so much online, on blogs, on videos, on all that free content, that giving back of my time was, uh, was something right to do. Thank you. <laughs>